My name is Clayton Gerald. I'm from Mumfordville, Kentucky. That's in Hart County. Uh, it's at 65 off of Interstate 65. I'm a commercial hay farmer and uh, we grow about 340 acres of alfalfa, about 580 acres of alfalfa orchard grass mix, and about 120 acres of timothy. That's the crops we have for the 2021 season. This hay is primarily baled in two string small square bales for the horse market in southeastern United States. In our operation, we um, cut with two 16-foot New Holland self-propelled hay binds uh, with uh, rubber conditioner rollers. Each one of these machines can cut about 15 acres an hour. With the two machines together, we can cut about 30 acres an hour. We tether our hay with three crone 26-foot six-basket tethers. They'll do about 20 acres an hour a piece for a total of about 60 acres an hour. These machines will get two swaths off of our windrowers. So we're actually taking a 26 foot machine and tethering 32 foot of hay. It helps us to be just a little bit more efficient and for our equipment to fit each other. We rake with uh, in Rossi Y rakes. And again, these rakes cover about 28 foot, which if the hay is not tethered, will get two swaths off the windrower. Or if it is tethered, it'll pretty much get the same thing that the tether gets. In the spring of the year, when we're cutting less acres and getting more bales, we might only rake with two or three rakes. In the fall of the year, when the hay's not yielding so much and we're cutting more acres, we can use all four rakes. If we're using all four rakes, we can rake about 80 acres an hour. And that's important in getting the hay raked at the right moisture. We bale with seven John Deere 348 small square balers. Uh, we try to bale at about 14 strokes per bale. That's about 6.6 .6 bales per minute. And that would uh, work out to about 360 bales an hour. But when you've got turn times at the end of the field and transport times between field and field, we figure our balers average about 300 bales per hour per baler. So we can bale about 2,100 bales per hour. We, we pick up our hay with four New Holland self-propelled bale wagons. These wagons hold 160 bales per, per load. If the barn is close to the field, we can do a load about every 20 minutes. Uh, the furthest it is from a field to a barn in our operation is about three miles. And then you're probably gonna take 30 to 40 minutes per load. But if the barn is close to the field, we can pick up about 1,920 bales an hour with these four machines. We have enough capacity to hold about 150,000 small, 115,000 small square bales in the four hay barns that we have. And that's just jumped, dumped off the bell wagons, not stacked by hand or anything else. We do load all of our hay mechanically into van trailers. Uh, the grabber will pick up 18 bales, which is one layer off the bell wagon. We stack them six high on our own portable homemade dock and push them in a trailer. The bales are 35 inches long, plus or minus one inch. We can get 648 bales in a 53-foot dry van trucker. And the main thing I want to talk about today is, is the order in which we cut our hay, what we do when, when the weather doesn't cooperate, uh, what fields do we cut first, what fields do we cut second, what order do we cut them in, etc. This picture here was took in um, March of 2012. We was actually cutting this alfalfa in March and we did put it up dry. That's an unusual situation, but it happens every now and then. It's hard to know what to do when you don't know what's fixing to happen. It's a lot easier to look back and say what I should have done last year than it is to say what I should do this year. In um, our area, in our circumstances, we get an average of 47 baling days per year. A baling day is the third day after you cut hay. If you cut hay on day one, day two, you tether the hay or the hay dries, and day three is a baling day. Now, sometimes in the end of April, 1st of May, it takes four days for the hay to dry. So day four would be a baling day. Now, for example, in June, July, August, if you get four days in a row, you probably get two baling days. And if you get five days in a row, you get three baling days. And that's the only days you can really count when you t talk about harvesting hay is how many baling days you get. In 2020, we got 24 baling days for the whole year. We only got the bale hay 24 days, and we definitely didn't miss any. 
So that's about half of what average is. So it was a really, really tough year for us to get our hay put up and get put up right. What our plans are for the 2021 season is we've got about 120 acres of Timothy. Timothy has to have a head of three to four inches to be considered good horse hay. So that 120 acres, we can kind of put that on the back burner. It won't be ready to bale till the first, the end of May, first of June. All right, we've also got 280 acres of our mixed hay that we drilled the orchard grass in in the fall of 2021. Now, when we drill the orchard grass in in the fall like that, it's probably not going to head out in the spring, and it's definitely not going to be stemmy or coarse. So there's another 280 acres that we can kind of put on the back burner. It won't have to be cut till the middle to the end of May. So that's we're not being pressured too much for that hay. Now, of the 300 acres of mixed hay we got left, 120 acres of that is older stands that will be taken out in the fall of 2021. So my plans for that is somewhere around the 15th to the 25th of April, I'll cut that hay and roll it and wrap it as haylage, and then I'll give it a good dose of nitrogen after that. And so I'll get a good second cutting off of that hay the end of May, 1st of June. So there's another 120 acres that I'm not under too much pressure for. So that leaves me my 340 acres alfalfa and about 180 acres of mixed, or about 520 acres, or about half of my hay that I have to be concentrating on in the end of April, 1st of May, to try to put it up as good quality horse hay. We will really concentrate on the straight alfalfa because if it gets over mature, it will go downhill pretty quick. And 180 acres of mixed isn't that difficult to work in. So now we've just solved a lot of our problems for the 2021 season providing everything goes good. And somewhere around the 1st to the 10th of May, when we get a window, we'll start working on them acres and getting them put up in good shape. And then we'll go into the, and it depends on the weather and everything, we'll go into the 200 and some acres of mix that we sowed orchard grass in and cut it next. And then we'll be able to cut our Timothy and our second cutting on what we cut and wrapped. So that's kind of our plans for how to get through um, the first of, of 2021. Now, what if we have another year like 2020 where it rains and it rains and it rains and we can't really get in the fields? What does that really hurt? What do we do about it? How can we solve some of them problems? What direction should we go in? All these things are questions that um, you kind of got to take as you go. You, you don't know what's going to happen. But I'm going to give you some examples. Let's, let's take an alfalfa orchard grass mixed field. This is a real nice field of hay uh, at 35 days old. Um, it's probably going to be 60% alfalfa and about 35% orchard grass. And let's say it's got about 5% weeds in it. Well, that's, that's still going to be really, really good hay. The, the alfalfa is just going to be in a pre-bloom stage to early bloom stage. The orchard grass is going to be fine. Top quality hay. But let's say it's calling for rain and we can't get to this field. Well, we give it another 10 or 15 days. Now it's 45, 50 days old. Now we're probably looking at a field that's 30, 35% alfalfa because at 35 days, the alfalfa has quit growing and it's not making any more. The orchard grass has continued to grow. It's going to make more yield, but the quality is going to go down. So we're at 30, 35% alfalfa, 60, 65% orchard grass, and now our 5% weeds has turned into probably 20% weeds. So we just lost a lot of quality in our hay by giving it another 10 or 15 days. And if you add another 10 or 15 days to that and say it's 60, 65 days old, you're probably gonna have a big weed patch with very little alfalfa. So what we've learned and, and what we'll try to do is at 35 to 40 days, if we don't see a good window in the next few days, go ahead and just cut that field off, roll it and wrap it, and then put it back in rotation. And then when it would have been 60 days old, it'll be 30 days old and it'll be back to top quality hay. You're gonna lose a little yield, but you're gonna gain a whole lot in quality. And in our business, that's the key to it, selling top quality hay. And that's how we make a profit, is by selling the best hay that we can sell. And that's the hay that's in demand. Now, what do we do if it's um, a 30 and a 40% chance of rain and we're behind? I don't like to cut hay anything over a 20% chance of rain but if we're behind and we've got four or 500 acres that needs cutting, we might have to cut with a 30 and 40% chance of rain and take a chance on it. So what hay would I cut in that circumstances? Well, in my experience, the straight alfalfa, the pure alfalfa cannot stand almost no water. Even a heavy dew will 
turn it brown and, and hurt it some. So in that in that window, we will cut something that's got the heavier grass in it, an older stand of mixed or something with heavier orchard grass in it. It could probably stand a few hundreds of rain and maybe even a tenth and not hurt it really, really bad. Uh, and that would be a hay that we would take a chance on with a 30 or 40% chance of rain. Hopefully we can get it up and get on to the next step. For our straight alfalfa, we've really got to get it in, in as dry conditions as possible, hopefully without much dew. We try real hard not to ever tether our straight alfalfa, just leave it in the swath. And the top of it's going to turn brown, but we'll at least keep the rest of it green. So it's real important not to get that kind of hay uh, rained on. Now, all these are predictions of what we would do, what we should do. It's extremely difficult to know what to do until after it's done happen. It's hard to take a really, really nice field of alfalfa or alfalfa orchard grass and just cut it and roll it and wrap it for hay when it could be worth a whole lot more money if we can square by it. But at some point, we have to give up on that hay and not fill our barns plump full of hay that's not horse hay and not sellable hay. Our goal is to put the very, very best hay we can put in our barns, not take up our barn room with hay that's not horse hay, not sellable hay, uh, something good and green and soft and pretty and cut at the right stage that'll test good and be the right quality. That's the direction we're going and that's, I don't have a silver bullet. Uh, I don't always do it right. I don't know uh, till after it's over with what I should have done and what I would have done. But our goal is to fill these trailers full of top quality hay in, uh, get the customers the, the product that they desire. And in Kentucky, our biggest challenge is definitely the weather. Um, we deal with it and do what we can with it. Thank you very much.